Well, hello, hello, and welcome to the live stream. I'm Jesse Showalter. You're joining me here on my channel, and today is another live design stream. It's going to be a lot, a lot of fun. We got people in the chat joining us already. Say what's up, what's up? Over to Mark Sloan and to Jalaluddin. Back in the house, Emmanuel Duress. Woohoo! Ready to go. Let's do this thing. Um, man, it's going to be a fun day. We're going to be doing some really fun design. Man, let me just crank my lights down. They're a bit bright today. Uh, I got some beautiful light coming through my windows on this fine Texas morning. Uh, and I hope everyone's having a good day, getting ready for a good weekend. It's Friday, y'all. It's Friday. What are you going to do? Um, will you be like me? Don't spoil it for me. Finish the final episode of WandaVision because I'm all in. Super duper lots of fun. Going to be watching that tonight, I think. So if you put spoilers in the chat, I will read over it. And I will ban you for life. No, I'm just kidding. I won't do that. But I'm really excited that you guys are here. The plan of, of the day is to uh, to actually do a little bit of design work. We're going to be doing a fun project uh, inside of Figma. And we're going to be doing some big website animation, some timed animation, um, some big explosions into like menus and some fun stuff like that. It's just going to be a fun exploration in Figma today. Um, and if you want the starting file, be just consider maybe becoming one of my members. I have a lot of amazing members. You can become one by hitting that little join button and checking out whether or not you want to be a supporter or an insider. Either way, it keeps the channel going um, and it just does nothing but improve it. Um, hey, I have a really big announcement, you guys. Really big announcement. Besides the fact that my face looks all weird because of the camera right now. Um, here is my big announcement that on March 26, I will be hosting a set of Dribble workshops um, on the Dribble platform. You can find it right now. The link is down in the description. I'm going to be running two workshops back to back on Friday, March 26, learning UI and UX design. The first one's going to be about designing and prototyping modern interfaces inside of Figma. And then the second one is going to be modern delivery workflows. So how do we take this product that we've designed? How do we deliver it to clients and stakeholders? How do we get feedback? How do we take this prototype next level and maybe even turn it into an application using some no code software? How do we do this whole thing? Um, that's what we're going to be kind of working on and focusing on in the workshop. So if you want to, you get early bird pricing. You just use this little link right here. Just code Jesse 15, follow the link in the description and sign up for the workshops. Join me there. It's going to be a lot of fun. You actually get to interact with me, ask questions. I might even be bringing people up on stage. Um, it is a paid workshop, but it's each of these workshops is going to be three hours long. So three hour workshop all on designing and prototyping. And then another three hour workshop about these modern um, boy, oh boy, like a modern workshop on um, like delivery methods and working in teams and working with clients. And so if you want to learn UX design, how to be a freelancer, how to work in teams, how to use Figma, how to design and prototype and launch and build, this might be like the deep dive kind of day. You just set aside your Friday, join me and you'll get hopefully everything you need to just like kickstart your your whole career and your process. So a lot of people have been asking me about courses. This is my first, yeah, this is my first foray into courses and workshops and I'm doing it with Dribble. I'm partnered with Dribble, y'all. It's really exciting. All right. Hey, enough of that. Um, but uh, I would love to see you guys there. And I would love the, oh yeah, side note, that little discount code, it only lasts for this week. This is the only week for the early bird pricing. I'm going to be posting more stuff about it up on my socials and stuff like that. So that's enough of that. Let's get into some work. Uh, let's try some stuff today. Hey, we're going to be working in Figma um, today. So if you're used to me working in Adobe XD, that's fine. I'm not tool specific. I like any tool that works for the project. And today we're going to be using Figma. Uh, this Figma is free to use and download to start with for certain aspects. So that's super cool. Um, and here's what I have in my starting file um, is this really, really simple, just kind of nothing uh, file. It's got a big circle over here. It's got an artboard that I believe is, let's see, 1440 by 900. I like 1440 by 900. Um, if you are kind of figuring out, hey, when I'm doing like a desktop website design, do I do this big 1920 by 1080, like a, like a screen of a widescreen TV? I think that's too much. I think that handicaps you really quickly. I think you got to go a little smaller because the average screen size 
just is not gonna be 1920 by 1080, right? So I, I like 1440 by 900. And if you're looking, you're like, which one is that? If I hit A for artboard, you can see I have desktop of 1440 by 1024 or 1440 by 900. You got some options here, right? But notice all of these, like none of these are 1920 by 1080. So, you know, just keep that in mind. Um, that's one thing I would say, like I really, another, a small thing I enjoy about Figma is that. Um, I do have a little grid laid out here. You can see if I press Control G, it can turn it on and off. It's kind of hidden right now. Why don't we change the color of that? I'm gonna go into my layout grid options here. I'm just gonna change the color to maybe like a red. Or maybe, yeah, let's make it red. And then let's bump up the uh, opacity of it a little bit. If you're not like hip to the layout grids and how you can create uh, layout grids inside of Figma, I think I need to make a, like a, a separate video about that pretty soon here because there's lots of really cool options. Like right now I have a column grid. If I wanna change it, I can change it from column to grid, like a pixel grid or to rows. I don't just have to have one, I can add multiple. So we can do a pixel grid on top of it, or we can turn this into uh, like a rows grid really, really easily like this and start creating vertical rhythm uh, for a project. Or we got that 10 pixel automatically, 10 pixel pixel grid. Um, and they are fixed in place by uh, by their very nature. So that means if I am to change the size of this, it's not gonna try to responsively size my, my grid, which maybe you want, you can change that. I like them being fixed like this, um, uh, just you know, as you kind of start a project. But that's how I like to kick off a little um, a little bit of grid. Hey, somebody asked, let me see, Emmanuel asked, can you do liquid animation of Figma? Yeah, you can. I wouldn't call it liquid animation. I would call it smart animate because that's what they have and that's what we are gonna do today. Also, side note, wow, lots of things going on today. Um, make sure there's a few other things in the description you should check out. Number one is a link to try my favorite nootropic performance drink. It's spicy, it's ginger, it's amazing, it's called Legend. But the second thing is, <clears throat> if you wanna submit your portfolio for the end of this stream to get your work reviewed, then there's a link down in the description to go to my Instagram, just DM me a link to your portfolio or a piece of work, and I'll try to pull it up on screen, and maybe we can talk about it, all right? So that's a thing. Mm. Always check the show notes, always check the description for things that are going on. All right, let's jump back in. Let's actually get started here. I'm gonna turn my grid off because I have a few things on my artboard that are kind of pinned to the grid, not much. Like I have this weird little logo thing that I made really quickly. And then I also just have like this basic navigation. Okay, not much is be, gonna be pinned to the grid because I want the whole thing to kind of be a little bit bigger. I do think we need a little bit more text though. So I'm just gonna command or control C and then V to kind of paste some text down here. And oh, what are we at, like 18, 19? Yeah, let's just do like 20 pixels. Let's take it out of this bold and go down to medium. I'm using Futura PT Condensed. Uh, Futura has a couple different si or, or, or styles. Maybe I'll just switch it over to normal Futura. I don't need that condensed kind of thing. And then I'm gonna switch my text style over to fixed size. Not auto width, not auto height, but fixed size. This allows me to just expand the box and kind of dictate the size of the text box that's there. That makes sense? Yeah, so instead of it expanding as, as the thing expands width or setting a width and letting it expand height for this great, which is great for auto layouts and stuff, I'm just going to set a box and then type in the box, all right? Uh, let's write something like, let's create cool animations in Figma. I probably didn't spell that right. Um, I'm gonna take capitalize, capitalization off of all of this here in a second. So let's create cool animations inside of Figma using smart animate, animate, and and cool design tech, ooh, uh, tactics. I'm just gonna write tactics. You, can I just be really honest? Do you know why I wrote tactics? I don't know how to spell the word techniques right off the right off the bat. Okay, let's jump into some of the uh, typography options that are here. You hit that little meatball menu, and then you're gonna get some of your typography options. So for us, what do we want? I want to take a, I wanna just do no special casing on my options there. And it gives you this great little preview. Love this about Figma. It's going to give you a preview of everything. So alignment, decoration, indent, you have letter casing. You even have more like intense things um, inside of this, like horizontal spacing and letter forms, like ligatures. Um, so you can get really nitty gritty on the, on the typography inside of Figma, which I think is radical. Um, okay. So we just got a little thing right there. I think we probably just need like a button 
Um, also, this web design was inspired by a design that I saw in Dribble. So I have to like try to find the name of this designer because I didn't come up with this design on my own. I was just super duper inspired by his or her design. So uh, I want to give credit where credit's due because it was pretty rad. Uh, okay, so let's just stretch a button out here. And why don't we take our grid off command or excuse me, control G for grid. I'm gonna fill this thing with black. I got this little color palette down here. Pretty nice. And then why don't we just kind of put some border radius on this? Like let's make it a pill button. I just did that up here in the border radius area, corner radius, border radius, it's all the same thing. And then let's take some text and just drop it on our button. I'm just gonna use the bracket keys um, to do a little text there and then I will switch this to auto height you know it's one thing I really like about Figma that some of the other tools you don't have you want to know I'm gonna get a little fanboy on Figma right now um, first really quickly before I fanboy let's go to like up to a little bit bolder like this I love that it has um, a scale tool so for instance we go like this group and make this into our button Hey, let's make it into a component. Why not? Because we like components. But if I want later on, I want to size this thing up. I have a tool. I just press K and I get this little this little white uh, kind of white and black double sided arrow. This allows me to scale everything in proportion. I know there's other like sketch. You can like go into a scaling command and XD does not have great scaling features. I'm going to be really honest, but I love Figma scale tool just by hitting K on your keyboard. I like that. That's just me. Okay. So, all right. So we got a button in there. Woohoo. I haven't done a whole lot, um, but now we're going to do a little bit of animation with these circles. So I'm going to bring this circle in. I, you know what? It's kind of like abstract, so I can kind of put it wherever I want, but um, I'm kind of just dropping it behind all of the text. And here's the thing. I want to call this purple thing we have in the back background. And then right now I'm kind of happy with everything else. So I'm just going to kind of lock everything else. Um, hi, yep. Lock, lock, lock. Bum, 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 bum. Let's just lock like this. Boom. We're just locking all these layers. I forgot the quick command for lock. Okay. So we're just, this is ellipse one. That's exactly what we want. But we want we want to be able to control them and animate their shape, like cut them in half and do all sorts of fun stuff on the fly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a rectangle right over my ellipse. Okay. I'm just going to make sure that it is lining up on all sides of my ellipse. And I'm going to use this as a mask here in a second. Let's just bring our ellipse up and then I'm going to grab the two, right click on them and say, use as mask. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. So now we have this mask and it's, it's literally the circle is, is actually become the mask, so to speak. Um, and now we're just moving this image like around inside of it, which is pretty cool. So what we want to do is actually take the mask and fill it with that cool color boop, yet again. And so now what we have is I can cut my circle in half this way. I can cut it in half this way. I can do all sorts of fun stuff right now. Let's just fill it all the way in like you do. I think that's probably the way to go. And we're going to stop here and answer some questions in a second, but let's call this uh, ellipse one, just like we had there. Let's do another one of these and we'll call this one. You guessed it. Ellipse two. Now it's something interesting to note. We are going to basically create uh, like artboards that animate back and forth between each other using timed animations or delayed animations. And we want to make sure that we have everything in the same place on our artboards. Okay. So let's lock our button again and let's take ellipse to open it up, grab our, our thingamahoo, our mask and just move it over. So now woo, watch out now. So now we have kind of a cool little, I don't know, pattern made out of these ellipses. All right. And now I can move them behind my text. They're kind of back there just doing their thing. I do want to make sure that they are lined up. So I'm going to use my alignment tools. They were lined up. My eyes are not so bad. So let's just butt it up right against there. I like this. I like this. This is pretty cool. Um, there's, it's really actually, I like the design. It's, there's a lot of fun overhang of the typography and the buttons and all that kind of stuff. Um, okay. So that's pretty cool. Hey, I tell you what, why don't we stop right here now that we have our basic design and why don't we do a little bit of question and answer time with Jesse. All right, jumping over. We got a big, bright super chat by Jaime Jimenez and he asked the question, would it be best to create animations in Adobe animate or, uh, or after effects? That's a great question 
question and while I'm doing and I'm answering your question, I'm gonna try to fix my face because my face is all crazy with this green screen stuff. Let's just back it down a little bit. All right, that's better. Hey, Jaime, um, that's a great question. Here's what we wanna do. Um, if you have really complex animations, I would say, yeah, you can definitely jump to After Effects. I think the tools are really good nowadays. Like I think, you know, Figma, Adobe XD, you can do a lot of, as you'll see here in a second, you can do a lot of cool animation stuff if you're just creative and clever about it. Um, without having to jo jump into a tool like After Effects or Animate or something like that. If you want really complex animations, then by all means jump into one of those tools. I think that could be a great workflow, especially if you are, you know, uh, you know your way around After Effects and you're using Adobe XD, then that whole, using that whole thing together, that suite of tools can feel really, really clean, really, really easy um, just to transition back and forth between those tools because it's all in the suite, right? So that's great. There's other tools you can use if you want something that's a little bit more like, uh, you know, you could use something like Design Camera or Rotato to do kind of 3D cool mock-up animations, save it as a video and just embed the video in your site or your project. Um, you could use something like Spline if you want to have like cool embedded 3D shapes and animations and do 3D work. You could use something like that. So it kind of depends on the type of animation that you're looking for, Jaime. Um, so I don't know, uh, let me know, like elaborate on that question a little bit um, and let me know what type of animations you're kind of thinking about. But hey, that's a great question. Uh, hopefully you'll see at the end of this what you can and can't do using some of these smart animate tools inside of these products like Figma and Adobe XD. Let's answer another question. Um, uh, oh, uh, Masayu has a little special thumbs up and a colored chat. That's because she's he or she is one of my members. They're one of my members. I just want to point that out. That's rad. Um, I said I'm going to be designing today in XD. I messed up. I, sh I should have put Figma. I'm sorry about that, Obed. Apologies. Um, okay. La -ba 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 -ba. Uh, ooh, Emmanuel says in March, Adobe XD will have serious updates like designer collaborations like in Figma and so on. That's really cool. Hey, it's cool. Uh, these tools are just on a race to stay relevant and have good features. I think this is the, the revolution of design tools. Like you wanna be a designer, now is the time. There's such a lower barrier to entry. Maybe you should do like a clubhouse meetup and talk about like the low barrier to entry in design tools and just the design world right now, okay? So um, that would be super good. Let's talk one more question, jump back in. Um, okay, let's see. Ba -ba -ba. Yep, ba -da -ba -ba -da -da. I already answered that question. Hey, if you guys don't have any more questions, let's jump back in and get to design. Hey, that was question and answer time with Jesse. All right, let's get back into it. We are now ready to create multiple artboards and answer a little bit of Jaime's question. Start creating some fun animations back and forth between these, uh, the, this setup, this design that we have on the screen. So let's jump in, let's do that. Um, I have this artboard, remember, everything is named the same and that's important. They're named Ellipse 1, Ellipse 2. When you do Smart Animate, you need to have layers named the same and they need to stay in the same layer stack. So it's really hard for, for Figma or XD or any of these to jump them around the layer stack. That's wonky and weird. So that's a limitation that you might need something like After Effects for. So keep that in mind if that's something you're looking for. But I'm literally going to Command C, Command V, copy a new version of this artboard and it immediately names this artboard number two, which is what I want, definitely what I want. Now what we want to do is start creating, now we get to have fun really and figure out what we want these shapes to do in our timed animation. So for instance, I think it would be cool using our, um, our, our blah, 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 our mask that we have here to just mask this one back the other way. Shove it to the side like that. That could be kind of cool, don't you think? Um, and then, okay, let's do that. I like that. And then let's do the same thing with this. Let's grab this square. Whoop, now we're just having fun with shapes. Let's pump, punch it over to the side like so. That could be fun. So it's a simple kind of whoop. You're gonna see a little bit of movement and sh uh, shifting of the mask. Let's do another one. Let's do a fun <clears throat> transition from there to something else. How about we then pump this one back out. Ooh. <clears throat> Oh my goodness, sorry. I led my cursor off the artboard. Let's move the mask back out to the edge here. And then let's have fun with this one and let's actually do some rotation and move it out that way. 
that can be kind of fun that's a one two three let's see what that looks like okay because now we we've created just a little bit of movement um and now i think we want to go in and do a little bit of this prototype work okay how's that sound i think that sounds all right i answered my own question so i'm going to click on my first artboard i'm going to head up to the prototype tab in figma in the top right okay i'm going to hit prototype and now you can either grab here like our little interaction points and drag it over or you can hit the interaction kind of screen in the contextual panel in the top right now here's a thing to keep in mind i'm not grabbing an individual element i'm grabbing the entire artboard because i want the entire artboard to be a time transition to the next artboard keep that in mind it's important so i'm going to go up here and just hit my interaction um plus and i want to say not on click okay i want a all the way down after delay i think they should change that i think you should just say time transition like adobe xd to be really honest okay this is 800 milliseconds or an eighth of a second okay so after a delay of an eighth of a second we want to navigate to screen number two instantly nope smart animate and i like a little ease in ease out the animation should be pretty quick but maybe not that quick let's go half of a second for the animation. Ooh, I pressed escape by accident. Okay, so you, we see a little Figma preview of how things might animate. That's nice. I like Figma's little previews. I think those are fun, okay? So with that being said, now we should just be able to, we've animated from one to two. Why don't we go from two to three? This time I'll drag and kind of drag our little thing over. Whoa, 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 or will I? Now I'll just do an interaction like we did before. Um, on, and we'll do the same thing. Actually, you know what? We will drag over. Let's give ourselves a little space here. Let's zoom out so we're looking at the bigger picture because we're so zoomed in. It doesn't need to be, right? Let's drag it over to, boom, to here. So again, after a delay, 800 seconds, navigate to three, smart animate, ease in, out. It saved all of our settings there. Beautiful, that's what we want. Now we want to start the cycle around. Let's drag it back to the first screen and say, again, after delay, 800, navigate to, smart, animate, ease in, and out, 500 milliseconds. We should have a little animation thing going. Let's press play and bring up Figma's kind of prototyping thing. Woo, look at that, fun little geometric animations. That's all we're doing. Just a little something, something to give it some spice. And look, we can sit back here and just watch it go. It's gonna keep looping because we've set, created that loop, okay? Um, it's almost a little bit of a programmatic loop, huh? If this, then that. If it hits artboard three, go back to artboard one. I feel like we're programming visually a little bit. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm stretching it a little bit, okay? So that's pretty cool, but I think we need like another big wow moment. That's what I think. So <clears throat> here's what I'm thinking. Let's create one more, which is, we're not gonna call this one four. We're gonna call this one menu. That's what we want to call this one. Let's build like a big menu on top of it. So if we, at any point we press get started on the other screens, I want it to punch out to this big, fun, exciting menu. Okay, that's what I want. And you know what I'm gonna do? Yep, I want it to be this fun kind of like peach color. So what I'm gonna do is just, I'm gonna expand this thing up whoop, to take over. Um, and Yep, that's, I, that's the animation I want to take place. But then I am gonna have to kind of come in and build a new menu on top of it with the peach. So you'll see this peach fade in. This is kind of my plan. But what we should also see is those circles kind of zip up to kind of take over the whole screen. Now we can build a fun uh, kind of menu on top of it. Let's just do that. Let's just take our big website animation text here, pop it in here. It's a little too big. So again, I'm gonna hit K for scale on my keyboard and uh, ooh, let's unlock it so we can actually mess with it. And now I'm just scaling it down. That, it was too big, didn't need to be that big. Okay, should we go black on peach or white on peach for this text? I kind of like black. It's a little bit aggressive, a little bit fun, but you tell me in the chat and I'll change it depending on what you guys think, okay? So we had a couple of links back here, like code, design, animate, create. Let's just do something like that, okay? Let's do uh, code your animations. Woo! And we wanna make these individual elements. Let's bring our grid back up. We might as well link this to the grid to try to have some adherence to design standards. All right, let's go uh, design your animations. What else do we have? 
animate and create. Okay. Uh, animate your animations. That's the weirdest term ever. And then create your animations, which should probably in this order be like create, design, code, animate. I don't know. I'm just kind of thinking out loud here. Let's take these and just tidy them up. I love the tidy up feature inside of Figma. Now that we've tidied it up, we can grab any of these and rearrange them and they stay tidied for us. Ooh, like a little stack of things. I like it. Okay, um, and okay, so that could look pretty cool. Let's take the grid off so you see it. Pretty plain, pretty simple stuff, right? Um, okay, but we're gonna want like a big X probably. I'm not gonna take a lot of time and like over design this stuff. So I'm just gonna do literally the letter X up in the top right hand corner for our menu. Ugh, I know it's not exciting, but what else? Um, and then I want some lines in between because I'd like to animate some lines too. I think that could be fun. So let's take this, whoop, and then again, let's bring up our grid. Where should this line stop? It should probably stop on the grid, right? And okay, so they're thin little lines. I like it. We're just dragging these in the in-betweens, aren't we? Okay, uh, take the grid back off. Whatever, that's our menu. Let's just stick with that, shall we? I'm gonna grab uh, all of these elements. Let's see, all of the things except the X. I don't want the X. I'm gonna grab the words and the lines and I'm gonna re-tidy up and redistribute to make sure everything's kind of just clean. Um, I'm gonna call this big peach kind of panel that we have, the menu BG background. And I'm gonna grab everything together and I'm just gonna call this the menu, okay? So that's our menu layer, real easy. Now all we have to do is take this menu layer that we've created and we need to bring it back on to any and all of these other um, artboards that we have and we, we want to have it in like a state, so to speak. So let's command, uh, let's just drag another one of these off the board. Let's work what the state will look like, right, on all of these artboards. I'm kind of artboard based animating you can do this with like variants too actually that gets a little bit more complex but you totally can okay so here's here's what we want we want things to just kind of be sliding in like all kind of staggered and to do that you're just going to stagger things out like so um and how about our x our x can go off the canvas and then let's grab all of these items like this. They're gonna come off the canvas and stagger in. And then we want our, um, we want, yeah, let's do that, okay? And then you'll see what we do here in a second. I'm gonna bring this up onto our artboard, Ooh, just like that. There's our menu, now it's in that artboard. And then what we wanna do is, the reason I kept this, the, the peach menu background visible for now so we could see it line up perfectly, but it's all still within a containing element, right? You see that? So let's just hide this. You can see it's all contained within this element. But now what we wanna do is take that menu background and I just wanna bring the opacity of it down, just like that, okay? So now we should be able to, should be able to take this menu, boom, bring it over into each of our other artboards uh, here and just paste it, boom, on top. And do the same thing for number one, boom, paste it on top. Uh, okay, great, 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 great. Um, I think then what we're gonna want to do is at any point, oh, you know what? Um, I'm gonna go back, actually I messed up because I need to be able to tap this button and I can't if the menu is on top of it, it then it's no longer tappable. Are you tracking with me what I'm saying? I basically put a big invisible thing in front of my tappable interaction point. That's gonna go very poorly for us. So what I want to do is come up here, grab this background and take it down. Now I should still be able to interact with my button. Yes, I should be able to interact with my button like that. Okay, so now with that being said, let's come back in to the other artboards. I'm just selecting the artboard, pasting that menu in. Okay, and now we need to set up an interaction on each of our buttons. Now the reason we're not being able to access our buttons is because we did the stupid thing, we locked them everywhere. So we need to, we need to unlock our buttons, man. Uh, hello, button. I would like to play with you. I would like to have at you right now. So let's start with this button, okay. With this being said, I'm gonna head back over to prototype. I'm gonna grab the button, lead it over to my menu. I'm saying on click, navigate to the menu. Um, I want to smart animate, ease in, ease out. 
that's exactly what we want. And because we already made that one, we could just do the same thing there. That's gonna be the same exact interaction. We just need to get our button unlocked on this first one and we should be able to then play our animation and see things happen. Now, what we're gonna wanna do is also, we're gonna wanna hit this X, I think, um, on our menu, add an interaction, say on click, I want you to go back basically. And hopefully I think it will reverse the animation. I'm almost positive, could be wrong. Let's play it and see it. So we have our animation looping, okay? And then you can see as I hover over my button, I get a little cursor. So it's able to be tapped and then, woo, look at that, everything. Oh, but it timed. Ooh, weird. Oh, you know why it timed? <laughs> it timed because we still have a timed animation on the artboard. Yeah, okay, so we just need to get rid of that timed animation on the artboard. That's all we need to do. See that timed animation? Yeah, let's get rid of that, just like that. Now we should be able to click and our items just animate in really easily. We should be able to boom right back so you can see the mixture of that circle enlarging and then the opacity and and position of that big peach background kind of it creates this effect where the whole thing is kind of fading in it's really really nice so again really easy we could create some like hover animations for our our menu items if we want to we create hover animations for our buttons if we want to we don't really need to do that right now i think this is probably good for the day i think it's kind of interesting what do you guys think what did you say in the chat about white or black create design to be white alone exactly they will have contrast problems yeah maybe contrast problems so i like i like the black i think a few people kind of chimed in but i'm into the black typography for these these sections but here it is here it is you guys boom also i love in figma where like if you're actually utilizing a prototype you can click on the screen it'll tell you where the tappable points are so that's super slick easy animation here's your liquid or your smart animations using figma today um pretty cool i'll tell you what why don't we take a second and do another quick question and answer time with jesse All right, I'm just gonna take a quick sip of my legend. Spicy ginger nootropic drink helps me think, helps me live stream. And we can now answer a few questions. While we're doing this, I'm also, uh, I'm also jumping over to my Instagram to see if I got any messages of people who want to submit their portfolios and their work. I got a couple, just so you know. While you guys are collecting your, um, your, uh, Boy, I can't talk today. Uh, your thoughts for questions, then you can also post stuff. Oh my goodness. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. Ooh, got a few things. People are posting some interesting stuff. I got some people in the chat, like Emmanuel's posting his links, but do you have any questions? Here's a question I have just for you. Do you think this design works? Does it, is it, is it too abstract? Is it too conceptual? Or is it fun to play with things like this and then figure out how you can implement them in real world projects? That would be my question, right? Is uh, how can we implement fun kind of uh, dopamine kind of inciting um, animations into projects, right? Because it is, it, it's got that kind of a fun dopamine vibe. I could see this like uh, as, as the landing page or homepage of a website, you would need to build out more things but for, you know, for what it is, pretty cool. Um, hey, Pavan asks, can you make a Figma tutorial? I actually have a couple Figma tutorials. Um, I've used Figma in some live streams. I'll start using Figma more in some tutorials and, and kind of spread the love around of the design tools. So that's a great question. I definitely love Figma. Hey, side note, um, a reminder that my Dribble workshop, it will be focused on using Figma. Um, it's, it's gonna be a lot of fun. You're gonna learn all you need to know about Figma, about UI design. Um, we'll talk about smart animate, prototyping, everything all inside of Figma because it's a great tool, especially if you wanna do handoff to teams and clients, uh, engineering teams, offering them code snippets, communicating and commenting right there in the file. So we're gonna do all of that um, inside of Figma during my Dribble workshop. So find the link down in the description, make sure you are checking that out because it's gonna be a lot of fun. It's uh, James Lucian asked, do you think Figma is the best? I'm so integrated with Adobe products, but I keep hearing Figma as the industry standard. Woo! Here's what I would say. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pivot that question in this way, James. Careful of anything you hear that says 
industry standard. I think that used to be the case, but I think that's an old way of thinking. Um, you know, Photoshop used to be the industry standard a decade ago for making websites. Adobe was just kind of the industry standard. Like uh, I, I got a job one time at a marketing agency um, as like a digital designer and they were like, do you know how to use the Adobe suite? Because it's the industry standard. It kind of was at that time. That's not the case anymore. If you go and interview to work at Facebook or Instagram or a startup, uh, lo especially larger teams like that, they are design tool agnostic. They'll say, hey, use whatever works for you, right? But be able to jump into other people's tools of choice and help them out as well. You know why? Because all the tools nowadays are so dang similar, like Figma, Sketch, XD, they're so similar. There might be slight nuances of what you like here or what you like there, but they're just so stinking similar. So I believe that when it comes to digital design specifically, that um, that whole you know industry standard thing is dead. It's what works for you and your team. So I like Figma for the communication, live editing, co-editing aspects of it. I think it has a leg up there. I dig it. I like it for those reasons. I think it's fully capable. It's fast. It has lots of things. The community is great. They're constantly upgrading it. Oh, I love Figma. And that's why I'm using it in my workshop. So sign up for the workshop if you're interested in that. Hey, any other questions? Let me know. We could animate the big text. It would be great also. Oh my goodness. Totally, totally, totally. Let's animate the large text. That would be fun. So what we have to do there, that's, dude, that's a great idea. Let's come into our menu screen. Let's do some animations. Let's hide this, this menu here real quick. Okay, so our menu is going to get hidden. Our circle has gotten really big and jumped up uh, in size but you're right let's whoop, let's let's lead these uh, pieces of text off the screen a little bit that could be fun to see that whipping into place couldn't it oh I like it that's all we had to do let's press play again let's see the boom now the big text animates on and off the screen I love designing with you guys you guys have great ideas that was a great idea that just adds a little pow, a little pizzazz when you're kind of going in and out of the animation i think oh love it love it love it great suggestion who suggested that who suggested that that was uh bop, 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 bop. Jith and cr said they could we could animate that that was a great idea you are top grade top shelf conceptualizer all right um Submaranian Kale Yan was saying, I was talking about Jesse's question of using animations for the websites. Oh, okay, so you were answering some questions in the chat. I love community. I love that people are kind of helping each other out. Have you tried animating how to glow a car's wire SVG in Figma or XD? I have been hitting my head on the wall for quite some time. Have you tried animating how to glow like the wireframe of a car? Ooh, I mean, that could be a lot of work. You could pen tool every single thing and then on animate add a glow around it, like a drop shadow. Mm, I don't know, maybe, maybe not. I, don't, I actually don't know, I haven't tried, so I can't speak to it. Uh, Masayu says, hi Jesse, is there any regular schedules for your live streaming or your stream just randomly scheduled to fit with your schedule? No, I do usually. Every Friday I live stream. I might be bumping that up actually. I might do two streams a week because I like doing these live streams because I like talking to you guys. It makes me feel like I have friends. Like you guys are my friends, right? So I might do some more, but usually it's every Friday right around nine o'clock central standard time for me. Um, so right around this time is when I do my live streams most Fridays. There might be, you know, a time or two when it doesn't happen, but I'm trying to, trying to stay consistent on the Friday live streams. Um, yeah, so that's the thing. Keep that in mind. Join me for those live streams. All right, hey, you know what? I think it's time to jump over and do some portfolio reviews. We have a couple of submissions, um, so good stuff. I'm just going to focus on the few that I did get in the DMs. People slid into the DMs and hooked us up. All right, so let's jump over and let's uh, let's talk about Oh, that's, yep, okay. So again, just for money, that's my workshop. But let's jump over to the first uh, portfolio review request of the day. And this is by our good friend in the chat, Emmanuel DeRessi. Um, all right, Emmanuel, we got a bunch of different projects here. Let's take a look at some of these things. Uh, Emmanuel is a UI UX web designer uh, from Ethiopia. All right, amazing. Okay, so let's jump in. Let's take a pe little peek at some of this work. I'm just gonna do a quick overview because here's, here's what's important on an overview. As I'm looking, I'm going, you say, you, you do UI, UX, and web. 
do I see all of that stuff here, right? It would be really discouraging if you said that and then all I saw was like poster design, that wouldn't make any sense. So that's kind of an important note. Do what you say and say what you do, be who you are and don't try to be a bunch of things, be who you are and make sure that that communicates well, just on the outset. So why don't we look at, ooh, I like the colors and always like a like a, something that has to do with like a wine label or something, okay? Um, okay, so kind of a little bit of, maybe a landing page, maybe a web ad, okay? Needs a little bit of explaining, I think, if you're gonna put a piece up like that. Um, so that's just, that's my thought on that one. Let's check something else out that might need less. This is definitely a website. So we can definitely see from the outside, that's a website. Okay, um, okay, okay, okay. I would love to, I know. <laughs> I'm gonna say this and then I'm guilty of it myself. I would love to see more than just this hero homepage. Like all we did in today's live stream was a hero homepage, so I get it. But I would love to see if there's other examples of longer kind of like pages where I see the whole thing. So, all right, let's talk about this piece though because it's here in front of us and we can talk about it. Um, I don't know if you did the branding yourself, um, but here's what I would say, kind of bad contrast. A little bit of bad contrast when you see those purples inside, I can't tell what it is. I think it should either be that little squiggle that represents the sound wave inside, the sound, like the, yeah, the little sound wave. It should either be white or maybe like a fun contrasting color. You know what this reminds me of? It reminds me of Anchor Podcast Branding, excuse me, Anchor Podcast Branding, which I really, really like. See the little squiggle they got going on there? But look, it's, it's, there's, well, let's just go. Uh, yep, let's log out of that. I just want to look at anchor. Okay. So it it's it has its own like branding style, but you can see the contrast of it. They have a style they're going like cool purple and yellow and kind of greenish colors, but see the contrast by that thing? It just looks real real good. So I would say, you know, you got to make sure you have contrast and things like that. Number 2, I think this element is crowding this top navigation. I think you need a little bit more space. So don't be afraid to use white space. Don't be afraid for this area to quote unquote look a little stark. I think this whole thing needs to come down and be a little bit more center focused. Think of like the Apple website or what Apple's kind of always done. I love the juxtaposition of this fun bright gradient and this black and white image and the text and like doing the same thing. Love that, think it's great. I think you could just bring the whole thing down, center the whole thing. I also think you could add maybe a little bit of really light elements. This, it looks to me, I'm trying to look, it looks like it's gray, right? I'd love, I prefer this thing to be white. I want the whole thing to pop with good contrast. Also the, I think this navigation, they're, they just seem a little too big for what's there. What's too big? I, it's hard to define, but this is a little too big. So you just need more spacing on elements like this. Like this button is so big, you're trying to cram it in. Make that button, think elegance, right? Think, think, just tighten everything up a little bit, like the size, the smaller of the text, and then elongate, give more padding in your buttons. I think it'll help to make it just look a little bit more elegant, because this is really elegant looking. I think it's great. I love the overlapping kind of like dimensionality of the shapes and the, and the character that's there. Um, I, you know, I love tucking things behind elements, but you do have to see what this letter is. So, you know, you got to work with that and just kind of bring it out in fun ways. I would like to see this lightened up, better contrast, more spacing, more of a focus on white space, and then adding maybe some small supporting elements, like maybe like thin outlines of a circle over here. Um, maybe do like take, you know, do like really small circle of grids, do, 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 and then like put a little kind of like circle or square of smaller dots like polka dots in there. I don't know, bring some more stuff in maybe while allowing the whole thing to breathe a little bit more. I actually, so this thing right here, I would have loved to have seen this thing a little bit bigger and then shift it down so it's a little bit more pronounced, boom, in your face, but still has all that breathing room. That's what I would have liked to have seen on that. Let's go back and look at one more piece of work. This is a mobile user interface, which I like a lot. Do we get, ah, we get a little bit more, oh, we got some illustrations, and I think we get like either a video or we get like a live prototype, okay? I can't touch or tap anything, but that's okay. That's okay, this looks familiar. Did you do this, did you follow along with me on one of my Adobe XD Live uh, daily like creative challenges? I think you may have, and it looks really good. Um, I like the illustrations, I like the color. If I was going to be nitpicky, I would say, watch the drop shadows, see how, how very like highly pronounced those are. If you have to add such a deep drop shadow, it usually means you need better contrast between the neutral color behind it 
and the card itself. It's just very high contrast shadow. So I'd, I'd get those down a little bit. Also, I'd bump up the size of this bottom navigation. It's not very functional, I think. So, um, hey, I think it's great work, Emmanuel. I think you're doing great work. You have this great style about you. I just think you need to keep on keeping on and really think about refinement and elegance, just little touches. Let's do, this was a portfolio that was submitted to me earlier in the week, actually, by Petars, uh Click. I think it's how you say it, could be saying that wrong. Love your branding, uh, your, your personal branding. Also, I love that as I move my mouse around, getting a little bit of interactivity with the elements, right? You can see like, these are separate elements. Here's this photo, here's this coffee bean. You must love coffee, experienced full stack designer. Here's your name, freelance designer based in Perth. Through considering craft design, I deliver exceptional experiences to help businesses grow and brands shine. I like it. It's a good statement, but I, I think it would have been fun to tie it back into, into the coffee, right? Wouldn't that have been fun? Like, hey, my name is Peter. I'm a freelance designer based in Perth. I craft beautiful designs and I love craft, like fine crafted coffee and espresso. That would have been great. It would have brought the whole thing together. It would have been like, wow, your personality is all highlighted. And hey, to designer Tom, thank you for becoming a supporter in the chat. See that? That, that warms my heart. That just makes me feel awesome. I just welcome the team. Welcome to the team. You're gonna get the finished design file from today's stream, as well as all sorts of other goodies. Anytime I release a product, like my Notion templates or my client surveys, you get, you get free like access to those as well. It's gonna be really, really fun. Okay, so let's see, as we move down, oh, we get, a, I love the, lots of movement. So movement is the thing right now. You gotta have movement in your websites, right? And he has it in spades, but it's, it's elegant. See what I'm talking about, white space? Look at that. It's not crammed, right? It's really, really beautiful. Also, look, I'm not, I did not look at this website beforehand, but look, see the polka dot bundle? Oh, 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 little polka dot bundle right there. It makes sense, right? Just add some fun geometry, dimensionality, vertical typography over here. The whole thing's great. Interest, see there it is, coffee running, tiny homes wearing black. Love it, that's personality coming out. Shove a little bit of that in this upper thing and you got me, it's sold love the 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 reviews right like customer client reviews amazing this is a fantastic portfolio just to present yourself you do ux design ui design branding love the little tags right like all the little tag like things design angel for agencies right think of me as a collaborative design partner so you're kind of telling me who you are and what you want strategic design for small businesses i love the branding and how these, all these little elements represent something love it love it love it love it super good um okay now we get to see some work and it oh we go i love i like the way this is presented big see this is big in your face amazing kind of like work it's like bam here it is and we can go out and see the live site which is always nice but this is a great hero image this is a great money shot and we're able to just go in between i wish i wish that's such a nitpicky critique right I, but i'm doing it hopefully to bring value it's like it's hard for me to see the whole thing unless i've perfectly scrolled so i'd want to bring these controls up um and just make them a little bit more accessible that's all i would say but i like this i like this kind of like picture board of kind of looking through things see here's the problem right? i have to go back up until I, i'm realizing oh these are different projects okay that's not, that's a lot of up and down for me and don't like that but i do love everything about your site the way it's presented really clean really minimal really modern um, let's look at this site. really nice. I'm actually doing a site right now that looks like really similar to this. Love it, love it. And there's like all the kind of animation, the movement in there again. So we can see Peter's style. He's really good at what he does. I would love to, I wonder if I'm, I'm gonna hit some of these services. Yeah, okay, work, nice anchor links that lead you down. I like this little section, kind of, it's kind of a preface to the work that you're about to see. I like that a lot, um, I'm into it. Kind of doing some branding stuff for Cube app. I like that. It's all really good. It's all really good. Um, you know, you don't have, here's my thing. I don't think you have to have case studies. I mean, he has like links out to the live site, right? So what's better um, than that? But I would like to see these bundled maybe. Is that weird? Like, I wish I could like control how I look at them. Like, oh, here's a project, there's a project, there's a project. Now I can kind of like get in between all of them. So I don't know, maybe something to think about. Maybe bad feedback on my part. I don't know, but I like it a lot. Overall, really, really nice work. Let's do 
one more thing that was submitted by Submaranian Kalyan. Uh, and this looks like a video of a prototype that he did. So let's pump this up full screen. And he's in the chat right now. So got doing a little Adobe XD work or Figma work. Look at this, got a little swipe gestures. That's really pretty. That's really nice. I'm liking it. It looks really fun. The colors pop. Drag gestures are really nice, right? It's gorgeous. It's like popular cuisine. We can drag up and down, like things are kind of fading in and out as you, oh yeah, only on Uber Eats. Okay, just really nice. It's something, it's actually funny, it's overlooked. It's hard to do to create really nice vertical rows that are all spaced and distinct from each other, kind of similar to like the iTunes app store. Um, it's a hard thing to do. And I think he's done a really, really good job. I wanna watch it again because I mean, the animations are obviously impressive, love that. But um, on top of the animations being impressive and cool, colors are really great. Navigation's well thought out, it kind of pops, it's kind of fun. I mean, it, it pops without like being overdone, right? The, the typography is really, really nice and layout design is really, really good. And I think I saw these frames kind of move. Did they move as he, seems like your prototype's a little bit, having a little bit of trouble, but I do see a little bit of movement in that. That's subtle and sweet. I like it, it's very, very nice. So again, I think with something like this, right, the animation seems to be like the real flashy thing that stands out to you, but the actual layout of the sections is actually really well done and beautiful. So keep this in mind. Um, I love looking at not only uh, portfolios, but just single pieces of work like this. He posted this on LinkedIn. I'd love to take a look at it. Um, that's really great. I would love to see this like as an actual app that I can use right now. I think that that could be a lot of fun. Well, folks, we are coming up to the end of uh, the live stream today. Let's just review what we did really quickly. Let's jump over. We did a little bit of animation work inside of Figma, right? Uh, we designed our our design, right? We brought in some nice big fun typography. We played with shapes. We played with masks by masking out these shapes and getting them ready. Uh, we talked about preparing for prototyping and animation, right? Having the same layer names and in the same spot. Um, and then we created and then linked our animations by moving things around, rotating, changing the mass, real simple. Then we created a menu that's actually hidden on each one of these artboards and is now exposed, right? So that when we clack, clack, when we tap our trigger point or click our trigger point here of the button, it actually animated things in and out and we used timed animations, click animations, so that we could bring this whole experiment together. Um, and we finally had some great suggestions in the community chat to move our big typography in and out to just bring that together. I love our staggered animation of our elements coming in and out. Really slick, really nice. You could play with the different easing and timings of the animations to have more fun. But from here, if you wanted to, you could share this prototype with somebody, have them view it, um, you could have people leave comments on it, which is really great. Or you can move over to inspect mode inside of Figma um, and get all sorts of details. So, hey, lots more to learn about Figma. Again, if you're interested, please get that 15% off on uh, my Dribble workshop that's coming up this month, March 26th. There's a link down in the description. You can check it out on Dribble. Um, I think Dan Mall, like the amazing Dan Mall has one coming up soon, but mine's on March 26th, the two-parter. We're gonna be talking about mobile UI and UX design, prototyping, and then handoff, modern handoff workflows. So go to Dribble, check that out. I would love to have you, and I would love to know that people from my community are joining me there. Um, it's really cool, it's really fun. I'm really like humbled by it, excited about it, blessed because of it. Um, and just blessed to have you guys here. So, hey, thank you for joining me on the live stream today. Make sure you meet me here next week, next Friday for another live stream. We're probably gonna use Figma again, do some fun stuff. And I'm preparing and building everything I need for my Dribble workshop. So I'd love to help you guys prepare me by asking me good questions. Me can, I can answer those on air um, and just kind of get ready, you know, for all sorts of cool stuff that's happening in 20, 2021. Weird stuff has happened in 2020 and 2021, but cool stuff is starting to happen too. So you guys are part of that cool stuff. So again, I want to thank my members. Thank all of you guys for being here on this live stream. We'll see you next Friday. Stay tuned for more content, more fun things here on my channel. Love you guys. I uh, hope you guys have a great weekend, a fun weekend filled with joy, relaxation, family, rest, and blessings. So I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Have a good one.